Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I just had this like really, really good idea to film a video all about people's assumptions of me. Now, this is totally original. Like I came up with this concept myself and to be honest, it's quite badass. Absolutely everyone has done this video and I actually really enjoyed watching them and I've been literally watching everyone so I thought that it's probably if I'm enjoying something it's probably not too bad idea to do one myself so I hope that it's okay that I've decided to jump on this bandwagon a little bit and do the assumptions about me video if I can get my words out. I asked you guys to tell me on Twitter basically your assumptions of me and honestly I was actually quite worried when I was doing it. If you have been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that sometimes I get a little bit of a hard time in the comments and I was thinking that I was opening myself up to that. However, and I'm not just saying this, I was so shocked by how nice the majority of them were and I really enjoyed reading them and some of them made me laugh and some of them just made me think, eh? <laughs> but I've picked out a few that I think were some of the best and some of the ones that I saw like quite often and I'll go through as well and just kind of see if I miss anyone any of them off or anything like that but I'm not gonna ramble on at the beginning of this video so just to say if you aren't subscribed to my channel please do hit the subscribe button I would love to have you back here for more videos and if you're not following me on Instagram you can get a lot more of me over there because I'm always on stories and I'm always posting pics so come and say hello over there as well I'll link everything in the description box down below without Without further ado, let's get into the video. So one of the questions that I saw kind of popping up quite a lot was about my past. So there's one here that says you hate your past style and think it's a bit cringe. There's another one that says you're ashamed of your past. I kept kind of seeing that one so I thought that I would kick things off with that because I just kind of thought that that was like that was probably the worst impression that I could ever be giving off and I really hope that's not something that I'm giving up off because I am so I'm so proud of my past and like where I've come from and the upbringing that I've had and yes I probably had kind of harder times and there were probably times when I wasn't a very nice person and actually there's I kind of look back even just a few years I think it's probably something that I've only realized recently about making friends and I would go into social groups and I would just assume that everyone was going to hate me anyway so I would almost ensure that they left hating me and that's something that I've really worked to change but I'm never ashamed of my past and I'm so like proud of the journey that I've been on and the person that I've become and even all of the style mistakes that I've made in the past they're all things that I just I feel attributed to who I am today and that's someone that I'm actually really proud of and so as much as there'll be things that I'll look at and I'll be like oh my god Lydia like that's so cringe <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean that I'm not proud of it or that I am ashamed of it in any way, shape or form. So I wanted to make sure that I was like letting you guys know that don't ever be ashamed of your past. Like at the end of the day, it's only if you stay in the same spot that you should ever be ashamed of what you haven't kind of done. But if, if you're continuously moving forward and you're continuously bettering yourself as a person and growing into the person that you want to be, then there's nothing to be ashamed of. So keep doing your thing. <laughs> okay, next up. Oh, this one was quite a funny one. Someone said, you look really tall. And I always think it's really funny because it's only ever when I do meetups that people are like, oh my gosh, you're so small. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm actually that small. I mean, I'm like five, six, five, seven. But I think that for some reason people think I'm gonna be like really, really tall. I think I've got quite long legs in relation to my body. So a shorter body and longer legs. And so it maybe looks that way if I'm like on camera or if I shoot myself kind of upwards, everyone looks tall then. But it's just really funny when everyone's like, oh, you're so small. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so I'm not actually like that tall and I'm not like you know I'm just kind of average I guess just a sort of average height <laughs> next up we have there's just so many nice ones it's like that you're the funniest and sweetest person ever that you're a crazy cat lady from another crazy cat lady what else have we got that you're too nice to people which is obviously these are all great assumptions and obviously very kind assumptions this one made me laugh is that you don't need to look at price tags no hate just an assumption absolutely not absolutely not I absolutely do have to look at 
price tags and I still do even if I'm looking at like a five pound lipstick I still want to know where my money is going and one thing that someone said to me once is that like people don't get rich by just being frivolous with their money they you know they count everything and they're very in tune with their finances and they try and save wherever that's how you kind of keep your money if you know what I mean so I always try to be quite kind of savvy but obviously I treat myself and I have a bit of a thing when it comes to luxury fashion and I really enjoy luxury beauty and I like luxury travel and making my hope my house a home so there's areas where I will spend a little bit more but I can spend a little bit more maybe because I save elsewhere so it's all about being savvy with your money and like making your money go further for you as well next up Oh, this is a good one. You are honest and open with ads. And this is something that I like to think that I really, really am. And it's something that I'm always really proud of. And I've always spoken about really openly on my channel. Like I'm not someone that tries to like hide an ad in the hashtags of somewhere in Scotland or something. I always want my paid for partnerships to be obvious and for you guys to know because actually more than anything, I'm so excited when they go up. I'm like, oh my gosh, this brand is, is loves what I do enough to pay to work with me and when you do this job you do become quite kind of in tune with brands and you know the brands that maybe speak to you and that you're that you kind of align with and it's just such an honor when a brand contacts you and they tell you that they like your, your content and they like your channel and they like what you do and so much so that they would like to partner with you on some content and that to me is such a compliment and I it kind of upsets me a little bit that these branded partnerships have such a, a negative connotation with a lot of people because of how adverts used to be done and I find that the way that adverts are done nowadays with creators is usually a much more organic and open and authentic piece of content and I know I can only really speak for myself but when I speak to brands I really try to like educate them and make them understand the power of allowing us to do our own thing and of course we we'll always have campaign messages and a key message but that's something that we are aware of before and a brand will come to us and say this is what we're doing and if you don't feel that that's a key message for you as a person that you think that you could communicate authentically and honestly then you just don't do it and that's something that is really important to me so I'm always working with the brands that allow me to sometimes it's a lot harder and brands don't sometimes take on board what you're saying but I always really try to work with the brands that want to work with me and like help them understand the best way to work with creators or the best way to just work with me because I know that a lot of brands have said that my audience respond very differently to a lot of other audiences. So it's also about understanding that one creator's audience is not the same as another creator's audience. But I am trying to be always as open and honest. I think the new guidelines with gifted content is it's just a newer kind of thing to navigate and I'm still learning what needs to be done with that but I'm always trying and I'm always taking it on board and if I'm ever speaking to the ASA I always say to them you know if I've done something wrong please do let me know and I'll change it but I do find the whole like gifted thing just a little bit more it's just taking a little bit more time to navigate but I'm getting there I'm getting there <laughs> next up we have Oh, this one's a good one, that you act posher than you actually are. This is something that I've seen like in comments on my channel and I don't know what, I don't know, maybe I'm one of those people, I think I am, but my previous boyfriend to Ali was slightly different in the way that he spoke, so he had more of a kind of London twang to his voice and when I hadn't seen my friends for ages and I'd been like living with him and then I came to see them and they were like, wow, your accent has changed and you're speaking a bit more like London. I think sometimes when you spend a lot of time with certain types of people or certain accents, you kind of mirror, it's like when you go and live in another country, you kind of mirror the people that you, you've been around. And then obviously when Ali and I got together, Ali speaks really well, he's got a fairly sort of normal British accent and 
that's the kind of British accent that the majority of my family has. My brother's got his own kind of accent going on, which I don't know where that came from. But yeah, I just feel like I've kind of evolved with maybe the, the as my life's moved on and I've started spending more time with different people and had different people in my life that maybe my voice and my accent has changed a little bit. But also, I don't know, I just want to always speak quite like eloquently and clearly on my channel because I know that, that not everyone is from England and a lot of people overseas in Europe watch my channel so I kind of want to just I mean I blab I blab on so much anyway but I mean you know <laughs> I just want to always try and speak as clearly as I possibly can so I probably don't speak to my friends like this but I'm just trying to like I don't know communicate properly but anyway yeah so I think maybe my accent has changed a little bit as I've grown up but I don't think that's a bad thing <laughs> And I'm definitely not posh, like, I, I grew up in a very non-posh environment and no, I wouldn't say that I try and act posh or more posh than I am. I just am who I am and I might sound posher than I am, but I don't, I don't put that on. <laughs> oh, you are a perfectionist. I think in some aspects of who I am, I probably, I'd probably say that that's right. I'm also very hard on myself if things aren't exactly the way that I envision them or if things don't go a certain way or if I'm not achieving certain things. I'm definitely very hard on myself in that respect and I can get quite low and it can affect everything that I do. But there's there's good things and bad things about being a perfectionist but I think that that, that kind of aspect of my personality has been such a huge driving force in my career and hopefully that standard that I hold myself to has also mirrored in the kind of content that I put out and the, the sort of projects that I've worked on, that's all kind of mirrored through. So I don't think that's a bad thing to be a perfectionist in the right areas, I'd say. Yeah. Next up. Oh, this is a good one. This one says, you have no black friends or any minority for that matter. And this is something that I think about a lot because when I was growing up, I went to a school and it would, obviously I went to school, but I went to a school and the school, it wasn't very diverse. So it definitely wasn't a lot of diversity. And I grew up in a very white school and I think in every year there was probably one or two black students and one or two Asian students and so I definitely grew up in an environment that wasn't as culturally diverse as I hope if I ever have kids that they'll grow up in and it the, the school itself in terms of like the curriculum it didn't really I've definitely I'd never had any solid education on the civil rights movement or anything like that and I think coming onto YouTube I realized how much I needed to do more and how much I needed to learn more and how sheltered my life at school had been. And it's just kind of, it was quite sad really because I actually would have loved to have learned about this stuff and to just understand the, the civil rights movement in such a more in-depth way. So I have spent quite a considerable amount of time trying to educate myself in my kind of adulthood to understand that more and to ensure that I'm a lot more culturally kind of aware and I think I'm not doing too badly but it is something that I am always working on and I always have to do more to understand and I often find that people want me to speak on different cultural kind of news articles and tragedies around the world and obviously this isn't a political channel, this is a channel that I speak about my life and fashion and beauty and it's very much a, an uplifting place so I don't ever feel like I'm the right person to all of a sudden start talking to you about these things. But I also want you guys to know that it is something that I absolutely want to be more educated on and to always do better and to ensure that when I am speaking on my channel to try and understand that I'm not just speaking to one type of person and that I'm speaking to millions and millions of beautifully culturally diverse people and I really hope to do to do better and to do more in that. That being said, I obviously do have friends nowadays that are of a completely different culture to me, a completely different race and obviously you've met Ken and you've met Graham and Ali's one of his ushers at our wedding again so we do have lots of culturally diverse people around us now and even just for them I want to be much more aware so yeah I thought that was a good little way to touch on that subject and to speak a little bit more about something that sometimes I feel quite scared to speak about so 
yeah. <laughs> so this one is a really great one to kind of talk about as well. This one says, you don't pay for a lot of luxury items. And I watched quite a few people touch on this subject in their videos as well. But I thought that this would be a really great talking point to discuss the kind of PR product industry that happens in being a blogger and being a creator. I do pay for a lot of my luxury items and I'm really proud of that. It's such an achievement to be able to buy the items that I love and to go shopping in the stores that I kind of once dreamed of being able to shop in. But with that being said, pretty much from the day that I started this channel, it has always had a luxury focus. And that means that I've built relationships with luxury brands and stores, which means that I work with them quite regularly and they see a really great return on investment when working with me because I have an audience that are interested in purchasing luxury items. I see the conversions, I see how many people click through, I see how many people buy, I see the size of their basket. So it's all information that I that is really, first of all, helpful to me, but it's also really valuable to brands. So that's kind of why they would then maybe give me vouchers so that I am speaking about their products on my channel. This is something that has gone on for years and for me is such an amazing achievement to be able to say that these brands want to partner with me in that way. But I can totally understand how as a consumer that can be sort of, you can kind of feel like, oh wow, they've got all of this stuff, but it is part and parcel of this job. And a lot of my job is centered around shopping and fashion. And I want to be showing you guys the latest fashion, the latest trends that I'm interested in and styling them up in my own personal way. And I feel like this is never something that I'm trying to suggest that someone has to keep up with me and they have to buy any of the items that I'm featuring. Nobody has to do that. But if I so happen to be speaking to someone that is interested in the particular item that I have liked and they're a bit on the fence about it, perhaps my kind of review and my styling of it will maybe help them in their purchasing of that item. A lot of people do contact me or leave comments saying, I can't compete with this or I can't buy that, I can't afford that. And it's never ever about a competition or making anybody feel bad about it. If anything, it's much like you, were, you would find when you're looking in Vogue and you can see how the models are styling up the latest Louis Vuitton pieces. However, nowadays I feel like girls on the internet are styling it up in a little bit more of a wearable way and in a more realistic way because you'll see that a lot of the items that I have been given as press products have been styled up year on year, season on season, and it's not just constantly thrusting a new item every single week. A lot of the stuff I re-wear and I wear multiple times and I get cost per wear, so it's a little bit more in depth, I'd find. But it's really important to note that no one is ever expecting you to keep up. This is my job and I've worked really, really hard to ensure that I'm bringing you content that you enjoy and that you engage with and also items that are relevant to you. And I've done a lot of back-end research into who you guys are and, and what you like. And I, I think that I have quite a, a sound understanding. And so the content that I bring is very much in line with that. But I'm always trying to be more and more transparent and learning what it is that makes you guys feel more comfortable. So yes, there is always going to be a lot more gifted product on this channel, but I do buy a lot and that will always be disclosed as well. And I'm always just trying to be the most honest that I can possibly be in this job. <laughs> Oh, these ones are so lovely. You're extremely proud of the fact that you've built up your name and business yourself. Yes, I am. I'm extremely proud that like the bank of mum and dad didn't have to help me out at all. And everything that I've achieved is because I put in the work. And I think that that's something, I'm, I'm always quite shocked when that isn't celebrated more. I, I find it really strange when I'm like, yeah, so I like, literally did this on my own. And I know that there's so many girls in this industry that are like, this is something that I started in my bedroom. This is incredible. I am now, you know, running my own business. I've started two more businesses this year. And that is such a huge achievement for the girl that was voted, you know, most likely to not really do anything with her life, to be able to sit here in front of you guys and say that, you know, I've done more than I ever imagined I would do in my life. And I feel like I've had, I've built myself such an amazing career in a female dominated industry. It's, 
pretty badass. Like I just, I'm so proud. So I'm always really shocked when people are like, oh, Lydia's this or Lydia's just this, like she's showing off and that. And I'm, probably I am showing off because I am so proud, but it's just, it, it's never with any malice and it's always just me kind of being like this is insane guys like can you believe that this is happening so it's never kind of you know that way inclined but yeah <laughs> every single one of these questions is going to be like because <laughs> I feel so nervous afterwards just literally going to be my nervous laugh throughout this whole video like oh. <laughs> what do we have next Oh, you work hard, but know how to keep a balance and you have good people around you and you're gracious. And that's really lovely, actually. Yes, I've, I've definitely worked really hard over the last few years. Not hard in the saving lives sense and not related to any other career, just in the sense that, you know, I do work hard. And I've always tried really hard to ensure that my friends and my family are kind of always around me and I think that's why I've never really got myself massively immersed in YouTube because my friends really do kind of keep me just on a level and I'm just so grateful to have that because I think you can quite easily get carried away in this industry and I've met people where their friends are just YouTubers and I'm just I, I don't I don't even know how to speak to them because it's like just totally beyond me and I just feel very overwhelmed by those people because it's almost like we're in two different worlds and so I'm really really grateful for the fact that I'm quite far removed and I just mainly keep my friends that have been my friends long before YouTube very much around me and I think that that's been a recipe that works really well for me but that's not going to work for everyone else it'll be very very different and that's absolutely fine but I like I like my way <laughs> is that nervous laugh again <laughs> So I've like gone on all of the ones that I've screen grabbed, so I'm going to have a look on the app and just see if there's any others that I can quickly kind of pick up before my camera stops filming. <gasps> I'm up against the clock. But I think I've answered some good ones in here. Yeah, I'm I've enjoyed this video and I always find it's a really great like talking point because it would be weird for me to just come out and start telling you all of these things about myself and just no reason. So yeah, I find these videos a really nice way to kind of prompt conversations and talk about maybe different things and things that my channel maybe isn't necessarily about. So I found this fun. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of stuff about my parents being wealthy. Like you, your parents are really wealthy. Your parents gave you everything. And I do feel like I touched on this in a previous video. So if anyone still has missed that, I'll link that in the description box down below. But when I was kind of spilling the tea about myself for a while, I definitely touched on that and like the dynamic of my family and why it's maybe a little bit strange so if you do want to know about whether my family is wealthy or not, which, I mean, doesn't really matter, but you can find that in that video, so I'll link it in the description box down below. So that is it for this video. I hope that you found it informative and I've hopefully cleared up any assumptions that you had about me. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button down below. I would love to see you back here for more videos. But other than that, I will hopefully see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.